Like a siren with a Stratovarius with a musical joke there for you. Mighty Mild, nice one, David. Yeah. Slap that animal Remember right keep... on there. Mighty Mild, cool. Keep your heart. They're the animals coming in to CBBC at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> they can be as scary as you like. Come on, impress us, guys. Impress us. Oh, yes. Remember to give us your name, the name of the animal, pictorial evidence of it, and tell us what your animal does. And remember your phone number, because our fave one will be introducing non-stop Steve later. So remember, get... Permission. Yeah, that's right. Here is the lovely Splatlock. <laughs> it's that time again. Yes, welcome, Splat fans. Time indeed to raise the drawbridge and invite 12 brave young warriors to battle it out with those diabolical defenders as they compete to capture the much treasured and highly coveted crown. Will the defenders prevent the attackers from taking over the castle, or will the young contenders overthrow them, seize the crown, and reign victorious? <laughs> Splash. Who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And above all, who will go? Splash! Hello, I'm Dick. <laughs> and I'm Dom. And you're watching the medieval tournament with a modern day twist. Oi! Not so much of a twist, more of a, a snap, followed by a thwack, then a ooh, round it off with a big fast splash attack. <laughs> and, uh, uh, easy time. Oh, yes. Easy. Come, come, come. Patience. Because this show is more of a marathon than a sprint. Mm. Yes, as well, the attackers will start the day dreaming of victory. Half of them will have a serious wake up call in round one, two more will have nightmares in round two, and then four will keep the dream alive in the final until one remains to hold the crown aloft. No scamp. Oh, naughty tinkle. It's my crown. Oh, I crop this and the beast. <laughs> ah, God, Gildar, it's a wimple! I was just capturing the crown. Yeah, in your dreams. Right, now you're awake, let's take a look around the Splatterlock moat. The attackers begin with the baffling barrels. Then it's up the slippery slope and across a terrifying rolling maze. Look out for the Splatzooka. The impossible incline is next, which leads to the beastly battle axes. And the water cannon, which keeps guard over the rope bridge of disaster. And finally, the perilous pole vault takes our attackers over the finishing line. Remember, they are against the clock. They're also against this lot, the dastardly defenders. And fending off attack in the moat challenge will be the following three muck buckets. The cream of the croc, Crocness. The Viking who thinks he's striking, Gildar. And our EastEnder defender, Thorn. Welcome to the Gildar Show. It's Blattle. Never heard of it. Do you think Gildar's mouth and brain are actually connected? Anyway, there he is on the water cannon. Thorn has the Splatzooka and Croc starts with the water drop. And underneath that water drop is our first attacker of the day, Estelle. <laughs> Nothing like a cold shower to get you started. You looked a bit thirsty there, thought you might need a drink. I don't think Rock Ness is as generous as she's making out. Next is the slope, and of course the Splatzooka. Where are you, Estelle? There she is. Yes, Estelle, there really isn't anywhere to hide on this course. Come on, let's hear it. I'm not scared! That's a spirit! And that's the moat. Who swangle? Brave words from Estelle, but the mace simply wasn't listening. I think it might have heard that scream, though. Rudely. <coughs> well, Estelle misses the dry land position here and ends up all at sea. But she's made a recovery. Alperton! Down she goes again. Thorn is really on fire today, but to be fair to Estelle, she really does fall gracefully. Uh-oh, she's at the bridge, which means it's time for Gildar and his water cannon. That's it. Hose her down, Gildar. I'm working on it. Well, he won't like that. But I'd say Estelle won that battle. I wonder how our young attacker feels about that. You're not as amazing as me, Estelle. What a put down, quite literally. But she won't mind because she's finished. 719 is nothing to scream about, though. Try telling her that. Claire! I don't know what I call myself. Honesty's not always the best policy, Claire. Oh, it's beautiful. She almost got herself into barrel number two. That's right. Into. It must be such a comfort having to listen to the defenders all day. Hi there. Oh, now Thorn's getting all lippy. Give the poor girl a break. Are you scared? Yes! More honesty from Claire. Yes, and it looks like she's about to receive an honest-to-goodness splat in the moat. Bog wallop, reverse, roll, reverse, a bog wallop. Can she cope with the incline? Yes, she can. Not many manage that. And it's a confident start on the axes. On to the second. But no, Pigler. She did all the hard work, then one slip, and it's all undone. But no matter, Claire has finished in an impressive time of 4.18. Here's Josh. I'm all 
mum. And the other attacker's mums will be saying, Why didn't you say hello to me like that nice boy Josh did? Are you worthy of the crown, Josh? Yes. Then you're going to have to get past us. Don't forget there's the base too, Thorn. It's not all about you. Well, so far, so... Oh, no. Filthy Mangle. He's back up and ready for the incline. Mucky Muggets. Well, when I say ready, I do, of course, mean totally prepared. Which is odd, because Josh is actually a scout, and they're generally prepared for anything. You know, Josh, you should consider yourself lucky. It's not every day you get to face the mighty Gildar. Huh? What would you do if you had to face him every day? Something like that. Yes, I'd rather face the moat than Gildar. And Josh's mum will be proud, as that time should be good enough. Did your mother teach you to dance like that? Oh. Awkward. Let's move on. Yeah. Here's our next attacker, Laurie. That's as maybe, Laurie. But now you're an aquaplane. Mm, I don't think that gag will take off. Oh. You're not getting past me. Yeah. Durham! And into the lump creamer. Thor once again showing off his accuracy. And Laurie makes a crash landing into the moat. Fly like an airplane, hey? I don't see anybody flying here today. Yes, well, Crockness, I don't see it. Oh! I see a lot of slipping and splatting, though. Oh, come on, Croc. Give the girls some credit. That was amazing. A splat of the day contender. But our little aeroplane finally makes a safe landing with five minutes 20. So Laurie might need to refuel for round two. This is where to make my... Here's Alex, about to take on the maze. Form fires, but Alex sprints across. Haven't seen that too often today. He continues down the incline and oh, toad toucher. Yes, we've got a rollover on Splatterlos. How does that work? Two crowns next week. Don't be silly. Alex now at the rope bridge. What's Gildar got? Come on, Gildar. I'm working on it. I'm a professional Viking. I don't think you've quite convinced me yet. Ooh, Thorn and Gildar bantering and bickering. Alex just splatting. I know what I'm doing. I'm a I'm a professional Viking. And Alex looks like a professional attacker with a great time of 2.10. Can anyone beat that? Olivia's going to try. <laughs> Hang on, can I have a moment to work out what she just said? Of course. No time to think when you're in splat a lot. Oh, apparently no, you can't. Thorn won't let you. And the mace isn't giving her time to think either. And down she goes. In slow motion, you can see that it was actually a mace-thorn combo, which often leads to a single splat. Alex down the incline and she's... Oh, no! She's OK! Oh, that saves her another splat of the mode, but more importantly, it saves her precious seconds. Remember, this is all against the clock. And she's cleared the axes, too. Gildar looks like he means business, so does Olivia. That's so fast, Olivia. Oh, spongy oboes! You know, you might want to wipe your goggles. You are missing an unbelievable view. You've got to be kidding me. No, Thorn, sadly he's not. Back to Olivia, and she has the third fastest time so far with 5.13. Right, we're now halfway through the moat challenge, so let's check out the leaderboard. Alex is way out in the lead with 2.10, and Estelle is in the danger zone with 7.19. Technically, they're all in the danger zone. You see, only the six fastest attackers make it through to the next round. And with six more attackers to come, no one can declare themselves safe. So it all hangs in the balance with everything to play for. And everything to splat for. Ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, Mr Dominic Wood will now reenact moments from the first half of The Gildar Show. Welcome to the Gildar Show. Consider yourself lucky. It's not every day you get to face the mighty Gildar. Did your mother teach you to dance like that? Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional Viking. You know, you may want to wipe your goggles. You're missing an unbelievable view. Thanks. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the first half of the Gildar Show. Also appearing in the Gildar Show, on this lot. Yes, Alex currently leads with 2 minutes 10, and Estelle is in that tricky sixth position with 7 minutes 19. So, uh, how do you think that uh, the next six are going to cope out there? Well, we know the course is pretty unforgiving. I'm talking about the course. I mean, how are they going to cope with the self-proclaimed star of the show? Just look at him. Anyway, he's on the water cannon. Thorn's got the Splatzooka, and Croc's on the water drop. Orange cannons, run! How about orange barrels, Nicole? Winky worm! Oh, look, she's brought a panda with her. Doesn't seem to be helping. What? Panda's wrong! Yes, Nicole, but why? You ready? No, no she's definitely not ready. Oh. Looks like the castle is doing a good job at defending itself, eh? OK, Nicole, how about orange maces? Do they rock? No, they don't rock, Dick. They just roll. It's the orange pandas that rock. <laughs> On to the battle axes. It's a good start. One step to go. Oh, prune macaloon! Have you noticed that every time that panda turns up, she comes a cropper? But I didn't see any! Oh, yes, you're right. And sadly, Nicole and her furry friend have run out of time. 
Lasagna, cheesy, and so are my pickup lines. Here's Adrian. Cheesy pickup lines, eh? Pump bubbler. Well, it looks like he was trying to pick up a barrel. Yes, he even gave it a peck on the cheek. Onto the mace. Will it be love at first sight? No, he simply didn't fall for her. What kind of scream is that? Well, let's hear it again and find out. Oh, quite scary in slow mo. Down the incline now, and he makes it. Oh, yeah. We'll see about that. Well, no love lost between Adrian and Crockness. Nuzzle chomper. Yes, Crockness distracted him. He lost concentration, and the moat said, Thank you very much. One more time. What's Thorn up to? Bristol! 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 Oh, oh that's what Thorn was up to. But it hasn't put him off, and with that time, I think there'll be a second date with Adrian later on. OK, Robin, let's see if that's true. Bulging wiki woo! I think you're going to swim through this course. Harsh, but possibly fair. Now, apparently, Robin can bite her own toenails. I just thought you should know. Hi there. British! A nice splat on the back there from Thorn. Can she really bite her own toenails? Well, why would she bite anyone else's? That's not the point. And Robin's almost nailed the mace. Oh, this will be quite a feat if she hangs on. No, this is quite a feat. Nail-biting stuff from Robin, but eventually she's booted into the funk gunker. Very close. Don't think you've saved yourself yet. Oh, Eastbourne ba bum bum Well, Thor's reached a new low, but it spurred her on, and she's into the moat. She did all the hard work and then got splatted. <laughs> but she's over the finish line in 5.07. Here's Julia. Hello, mate! What a friendly battle cry from Julia. Fat kidneys! Hello, barrels! Not sure if they're the kind of mates Julia should be hanging out with. Hello, slope. It's a water cold, Julia. So it's just, I'm going to make sure that you spend as much time in there. Well, Julia's friendly battle cry seems to be a distant memory. Yeah, do you like that? Not really. OK, mace time. No, it's not rocket time. Down she goes. Well, Thorn can't miss today, and he knocks Julia off the mace. He also knocks her out, as that time is too slow. Sorry, mate. I like to joke and he joke, joke, joke. She likes to what did he what, what, what? Whatever it was, she also likes to splat and he splat, splat, splat. Nice. Up the slope now. Vanessa? Ah, oh, there you are. Well, talk a munge. Thorn sends her into the moat. Flash. Nearly croc. We prefer the term talk a munge. Yes, Vanessa at the mace, -de mace, mace, mace. And there she is in the moat, -de moat, moat, moat. Okay, okay. Enough, but enough, enough, enough. How will she cope on the axes? Whoa, whoa. Careful there. She's done well. It's your turn now, Gildar. Gildar attempts to slow Janessa down. She can't afford to do that. Oh, swaffles, but she's down and sadly out. Gildar gets it done. That is why Gildar is the leader of the defenders. Yeah, right. No, oh, maybe. Here's Dustin. He needs to beat Laurie's time at 5.20 in order to qualify. Too late to be scared now. Surely now is precisely the right time to be scared. He doesn't look that scared to me. Whether he's scared or not, he's at the mace. And he's going to make it. Sorry, Croft, a little bit of focus, please. Nah. You just do your own job right, pretty boy. Oh, and the defenders are at it again. Gildar needs to concentrate on Dustin, not Thorn. Ooh! <laughs> Watch where you're shooting the thing! Oh, I'm sorry. Will I mess up your hair? Will they ever learn? Kaplesh! The pole's too much for Dustin. But look, Thorn's almost too much for Gildar. So Dustin finishes in 4.05 and he's through. Next time, you're mine. So making it through to the stockade are Alex, Dustin, Claire, Adrian, Robin and Olivia. So, six go through and six say goodbye. Now, that's a bit of a shame, really, isn't it? You become so attached, don't you? I mean, brave little Orlando. And who can forget Beyonce Trixie Bell? Beyonce Trixie Bell? No, neither of those attackers made it through to the stockade because they were never in the tournament to begin with. And the six who have made it might wish they hadn't because it's about to get very splatty indeed. OK, this week, Dom is doing these splat stats, but as you can't even remember the attackers' names, I mean, is there any point? How dare you! Go on, test me. OK, then. Fastest attacker. Alex, 210. Favourite battle cry. Switzerland, Max the Octopus, which was Olivia's. Best defender. Tinkor. <laughs> I knew you weren't concentrating. Tinkor hasn't even been out there yet. Precisely! That's how pathetic Thorn, Crockness and Gildar have been. All they do is argue. Fair enough. OK, then. Who will keep the crown? Well, Alex is almost twice as fast as his nearest rival. Mm, this is true, as the leaderboard will confirm. Yes, second place Dustin is almost two whole minutes behind Alex, but they all start from scratch in the stockade. Yes, it's still anybody's game. And anybody's crown. Ooh.
Yes, the attackers start attached to the giant spinning hexagon. But when the klaxon sounds, they can detach themselves and head towards the ladder rungs. These rungs will help build the ladders they'll need to escape. But throughout this, the defenders will be pelting them with goo, slime and foam. With ladders completed, they can then grab one of only four flags before escaping to victory. And with any four flags, two attackers won't be going any further. It's not just the lack of flags getting in their way, little Dom. Bring on the new defenders. Scab, he's barbaric, but that's how he likes it. Shaden just splats, and that's how she likes it. Tinkor never visits, and that's how we like it. Beware of the ninja. And the barbarian! <laughs> Tinker. Yes, even Tinkor doesn't know what he is. Anyway, here are the attackers. Claire's in green, Alex is in orange, Dustin's wearing blue. Scab with a bad hair day, Shaden primed with slime, and Tinkor in need of a bath. Adrian in dark blue, Robin in deep purple, and Olivia in light purple with foam trimmings. Hey, and they're off! And here we go! Abigavani! Scab back splats Olivia! Slippy is it to talk Not just Slippy, that annihilating arm has got it in for Alex. And it gets Olivia second time round. She's being splattered from all angles at the moment. Alex slides down the wheel towards his ladder with a rung. Actually, it's his second. Oh, splatty! Adrian slips off the arm and knocks Robin off the wheel. The wheel of misfortune for Robin. Claire gets her first rung on the ladder. Here's Shaden. Oh! Yeah. Nice throw, little girl! Shaden won't like that. But she misses again! Ah! And so has Scab. This missing is catching. Nice arm avoidance from Dustin. But nasty arm avoidance from Adrian. And down he goes. It's all getting a bit sploshy. Shaden now getting a bit slimy. Who's she got? It's Alex in the orange. She needs to slow him down as his ladder is almost built. Scab rules. Remember the phrase. Ah! Don't know if Alex got all that scab. Bit busy with the arm. Long distance slime for Adrian. Scab is like candy. Sometimes I'm sweet, sometimes I'm sour. Have you been feeding him sugar again? No, I won't make that mistake twice. Hey! Shaden is sliming anything that moves, although Robin isn't really moving at all. And now she's spotted someone else. It's Claire. Ah! Splat! Scab yeah. goose Adrian. Robin now takes a trip into the foam. Tinker is claiming that splat. And Alex is the first to finish his ladder. Well done, Alex. This isn't a day at the zoo. Hurry up. She's right. The attackers need to stop monkeying about and get a move on. Attackers! He's got the flag! Attack him! Attackers, attack the attackers! Scab, would you stop shouting? I don't shout! And once again, the defenders are getting distracted, allowing Alex an easy exit. Yes, he's the first one through to the final. And things are speeding up as Dustin claims his second flag. And Olivia finishes her ladder. So does Adrian. No, he doesn't. That one don't fit, attacker! Dustin now makes it to the final. Claire's ladder is almost complete. This is getting exciting. Two flags and four attackers remain. Olivia has the third flag. What will happen next? Oh, for some reason, Tinko's crying. He often gets emotional with only one flag left. It's all too much for him. And Olivia has made it. She's also through to the final. Claire now with her last rung, but she's got company. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, to see you. Fine. Nah, that'll never work as a catchphrase. Claire's at the top of the wheel, and yes, she has the last flag. And down she goes, and over to her ladder. Poeng! One last parting splat for Adrian. And Claire is at the top, and she becomes today's fourth finalist. Oh, yeah! Sorry, Robin, you're out. And she finally gets the message through to Adrian, too. They've got the message, they're through to the final. Now, after the stockade, they're all a bit slimy. So here they are, all clean and smiling. That's better. They're also one step closer to that crown. True, but that is like being one step closer to a donut on the moon. It's a long way off. There, now I'm one step further away from a donut. Honestly. You know what I mean. The attackers may be one step closer, but the final course is the most challenging and splattiest of all. So, I think you got some more splat stats before that final, eh? Yes, well, Dustin has been consistent. He's come second in both rounds so far. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I think there's something else that you're forgetting. Something about a little prediction that I made? Oh, right, yes, you predicted Alex would uh, win the stockade. Yes. So, he's now won the moat challenge and the stockade, but do you think he'll win the final? Well, uh, a pie in the face says he does. <laughs> You're on. <clears throat> right, let's meet the finalists. He'll be stopping Alex. No, the finalists he'll be losing to Alex. So, uh, we have our red hot favourite, Alex. And the equally great Claire, mm. Dustin, and Olivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just stop when you've had enough, son. Yeah, 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 well, you can just let go anytime you like. Uh, let's meet the defenders. <laughs> Here they are Thorn, Crocker, Gilda, Tinkle, Shaden, and Scab. Uh, enough! Let's call it a draw, shall we? Yes, I think maybe we should get back to the final. <gasps>
Here's the course in all its majesty. We start with the drop into the funky foam. Then it's up the teeter-totters. Over the barrier of all barriers. And onto the leaping lily pads. But remember, this is where the defenders can really up the splat count. Then it's up the water wall where the much-treasured crown of Splatalot awaits. The defenders don't want anyone to get that far. But what's this? No scary battle cry? Yeah, they're giving the attackers the silent treatment. Here's Alex in orange, Dustin in blue, Claire in green, Olivia in purple. Hey, they're off! Straight into the funky foam! Scabs waiting for them, their old splat! Yes, what a welcome for Claire and Olivia! But they shrug it off and head for the teeters. Shaden turns on the water cannon and has Dustin in her sights. Willy teeter, Willy totter, hi yes! And Dustin claims the first of today's teeter-totter splat triple whammies. Oh, Claire claims the second. Hang on, how many teeter-totter splat triple whammies have we got left? 17 last time I looked. Thumbs up! Thumbs down! Scab really doesn't like thumbs, does he? Attackers, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm getting kind of bored over here. Oh, so sorry, Gildar. Thorn doesn't look bored. He splats Olivia at close range. I'm having the slime of my life here. Oh, did you tell him that one? No. And Olivia decides she'd rather be in the moat than have to listen to Thorn any longer. Oh, now aiming for Dustin, he misses. Oh, but Dustin gets splatted anyway. He's getting lots of attention from Scab out there. If you try going very quickly, it might help. Go quick, boom, 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 go quick, go, go! Oh, hippie sap! And that sideline coaching from Scab really hasn't helped. You're right, they're all teetering, except Claire. Will she? Will she? Will she? Yes, she will. So, that's a triple teeter totter splat triple whammy. How many have we got left now? Oh, uh, I've lost count. <sighs> Dustin, now the first to make it to the barrier. Scab is still on his case, but he's hanging in there. Oh, Alex, and then Olivia still teetering. Thorn tries another long-range splat, but Dustin makes it onto a lily pad. Ah! Gab's not happy about something. Oh, look, Dom, here's your guy, Alex, currently in second place. Ah, well, now it's neck and neck. Uh-oh, Gildar's vaporizer isn't working. If he could fume, he'd be fuming. Take The guns aren't working! They're not working! Why are they not working? We're blowing air at them? Gildar's in a right flap. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. And relax. Back to the final. Dustin and Alex are now getting slimed from every angle. Splat! And the water cannon gets Alex. Which might help Dustin. Olivia still teetering. Jump, Dustin jump. now makes a leap. It's still neck and neck with Alex. Thorn concentrating on Olivia. Ready? One, a two, a three. The defender slime and Dustin leaps. Thorn really has it in for Olivia. He stared her into the moat. Oh, Alex is down too. Dustin is now definitely ahead, eh, Dom? He hasn't won yet. Woo! See, Alex is now level again. But Dustin leaps as shade and shoots. This is too close to call. Olivia and Claire bringing up the rear. Ah! Couldn't agree more, Scab. It's getting tense out there. Alex leaps, but Dustin is already at the base. Crook Nest decides slime is the answer, but the question is, can anyone stop Dustin? It's too late now for Olivia and Claire. And it could be too late for Alex as well. And Dustin's almost there. Come on, defenders. Stop him. There's a pie in the face riding on this. It's too late, mate. Dustin's at the top. He's made it. He's the new king of Splatterlots. All hail King Dustin. <laughs> Alex, what happened? Olivia and Claire can relax. Happy yeah, dance. Yeah. Oh, yes, they hate seeing the happy dance, which just makes King Dustin even happier. Whoa, what a fantastic final. And as I predicted all along, Dustin is our new king. Oh, no, you don't. You know perfectly well you chose Alex. Did I? Yes, and I think you'll find this pie has your name on it. OK, 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 look, it's just going to have to wait now. There's so much more to see. Look, it's time for... Splat of the Day! Well, this splat just shows how the defenders can get to you. Thorn wouldn't leave poor Olivia alone on the teeters. In the end, all he had to do was stare at her, and down she went. Ah, now can I pie you? No! I mean... How can I possibly describe Dustin's journey to the crown with a foamy mouth? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'll have to do it. Well, our future king was certainly consistent. He was second fastest in the moat challenge, and he also came second in the stockade. But he went one better in the grand final, beating the favourite Alex to claim that all-important splatterlock crown. I'm the king of the castle! Well done, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, well done, Dustin. Reckon you can take on the defenders in the new Splatterlock game? Play Splatterpult and fire missiles to knock down the towers. Go to bbc.co.uk slash cbbc and click on Splatterlock to start dunking those defenders.
Well, hey there, how you doing? It's non-stop summer. I'm Chris. She's the lovely Lady London. She's back, people. And yeah. we've got brand new scoop with Hack T-Dog up in just a moment. Yeah, and it's also non-stop Stevie Baxter today from 11. We'll be showing loads of his shows, including Deadly 60. Speaking of Deadly 60, we've been asking you to send in your brand new deadly animals. OK, I think we should take a look at them in a kind of wild style. Mm, how about... Like a cobra! <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's quite enough of that, thanks. But welcome back to the Deadly Gallery. First up, we have a deadly animal by Jasmine, and it's called the Sing Dog of Doom. And it sings so bad that it can burst both of your eardrums. Now, this is... Wait, I, I know this dog. This ain't no deadly dog. I know this dog. <sighs> <laughs> Don't you know it's a dog, Chris? He knows the dog, he knows everyone's dog. So, are we feeling dead deadly, mighty mild, or cute and cuddly? Oh, come on, the dog can burst your eardrums, man. Dead deadly. Dead deadly. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Pretty... Jasmine! Pretty scary there, Jasmine. Oh, hello. I think it just made a little noise there. <laughs> Dodgy! Who's next? Next up, we have a deadly animal by Sammy, and it is called the Maroon Alar. It has bright colours to warn off other animals and bright orange feet. He breathes breath of fire and lives in the Caribbean rainforest. Now, look, he is very long. I think you'll agree. <laughs> Gigantic! I, mean, I, know, I know Steve's a big fan of snakes, but yeah. I think he'd be frightened of one with legs and big spiny bits on Long! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what we're saying, dead deadly, right? Dead deadly? I'm feeling dead deadly. Cool. Steve will definitely be scared of him. <laughs> oh, Steve, this Steve, that he's not all that, you know. Uh yeah, he is. Well, Steve would be nothing today if it weren't for me. What? I was his personal trainer. You what? Well, hey, nice work out, Steve.